So, ladies and gents, The Pope's Exorcist. This will be my non-spoiler review as possible for a horror film that came out in uh, April. Mm -hmm. Today, in fact. It released today. This is with Russell Crowe in what I believe to be his first horror movie. Actual, legit, this is trying to be something reasonably horrified. Julius Avery is the director, sort of best known for Overlord, did The Samaritan, done some other things. He's sort of, he's around. He's not like a great director, but he's around. This caught my eye from the trailer because it's Russell Crowe, right? It's Russell Crowe, it's a horror movie, and it's Russell Crowe. And I'm thinking to myself, I don't think I've ever seen Russell Crowe in a horror movie. So I'm, I'm immediately intrigued. I'm interested. I want to know the cut of his jib. What's his, what, what, what's drawn him to this role? Now he plays the Pope's exorcist, right? The Vatican's head exorcist, uh, Gabriel Amorth or Amort. Uh, and basically, he goes around, does exorcisms. And that's kind of it, really. I mean, it's literally based on a real person, an actual individual that did write books about what he's done, or supposedly what he's done. Uh, and yeah, I think that's probably what drew Russell Crowe to this role. I, I really like this film, but I also didn't as well. This isn't like a, oh, I'm in the middle. Like, I actually had a good time with the film. There's a lot going on there that's really great. Russell Crowe is amazing. His Italiano is great. He gives it the best. He's such a good performance in this. Again, this is, you know, you're watching a Russell Crowe film, so it's always going to be a good performance. And I last saw him on the big screen in a little film called Unhinged, where he played like a road rage maniac fat guy. And that was, again, another really weird choice for him. But I think he's at this point in his career where he's like, yeah, I just want to try different things. But he's always giving it 110%. And he really did give it 110% in this. It's it, it's it's a good story. There are a lot of tropes in it, which you can sort of overlook. And you're like, yeah, it's not too bad. It's all right. You know, I sort of overlook some of them, like... You know, we see it now all the time in horror movies where a possessed person sort of snaps their bones and starts crawling on all fours. I am really sick of that. We see it all the bloody time. It'd be nice to see something different. It's very generic. We've seen it a dime a dozen, right? It's It's been done to death, hasn't it? Um, the twisting of the head, those kind of things. We've seen these things done a lot. But where this movie shines, and where I think most people will just be intrigued to go and watch it, is because of Russell Crowe. And he gives it just the best performance. It, it's not his best performance, but he gives it the best performance. It's really good. There is no one else in this role that I think would have made this film better or done a better performance than Russell Crowe. He really, really gives it his all. Uh, and there's certain little bits and pieces, the attention to detail, the, 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 the sort of carry case that the exorcist has. There's some interesting uh, things which I didn't see, which weren't tropes, or I haven't seen before, sorry, that weren't tropes. So, you know, when the exorcist, uh, when the exorcism is always trying to identify whether there is actually a demon or it's just a mental health problem, because that is a part of what Amort... Uh, actually wrote about which was you know people just need a bit of psychological help as opposed to an actual exorcism but he holds this coin up obviously with latin holy writing on it and he drifts it across their eyes and you can see uh, a distinct disconnect between the demon's eyes within the body the possessor and the possessed and that i thought was great i'm all about that that was really cool You've seen it in the trailer, the little boy, his voice does change, so it's not Italian, he is actually American, but then the demon that possesses him sort of has a bit of a Cockney accent, <laughs> which I don't hate, you know, stereotyping Cockneys, I guess, but it was alright, like it was fine, uh, and they, they synced up the voices quite well, some of it worked really, really well, some of it didn't, some of the... Uh, this is like a 15 and I'm watching it and at the start they sort of list why it's rated a 15 and it's like sexual threat and stuff like this and I'm like what and so when you, the demon really does say some brutal things that I was not expecting to see on the big screen because 
nine times out of ten, this stuff is watered down. It's censored out these days. So I wasn't expecting a lot of what was said. Like some of it was visceral and brutal. Everyone does a great performance. It, it, it's just it, it's a it's a pretty decent film, you know. Like it's it doesn't break the mold. It's an Exorcist film. It doesn't break the mold. But where it does break the mold is that you you're watching Russell Crowe in an Exorcist film. That's probably the best way to describe it. Yeah, and his performance was was just great. It, I wanted to go watch it because of him. He was great in it. I left satisfied as a result of that. There's quick witticisms and little one-liners which work and they all land. So yes, it is supposed to have some sort of horror vibes, but there are one-liners because apparently Gabriel Amort was quite, you know, witty. And they land. They all land. There's nothing where you eye roll and go, oh, whatever. Like, what are they doing? This is so out of place. It all lands. It perfectly lands. Everything lands. It works. It was really good. I don't understand why Sony released it in April. What are you doing? Like, release it in October. I'm... Uh, they obviously don't have any faith in this film. Which is peculiar because they try and set up more. And that was the eye roll moment. They tried to set up more movies moving forwards. It's it's not subtle either. It is slight spoiler. It's right at the end, but it's a bit like oh god. And you know it's not really a spoiler because you come to expect it. But this movie would have worked so much better if it was just a one and done, and then they they just hinted, not out and out, all but basically stated that they were going to give you more. And we won't see any more of this. This movie won't make any money. Um, it just won't, which is a shame because Russell Crowe put in a great performance and it deserved a better release date. I don't know why they released it in April. They should have had much more confidence in this film. It's not bad by any stretch of the imagination and it's just been dumped in April. Why? Why release a horror movie in spring? And also, sell it more on Russell Crowe because he's great in this. So anyway... Horror movie review in April. Would recommend though, actually. Strong recommendation. It's a breezy hour, 45 minutes, something like that. Pacing works. Music's good. Effects are good. It all lands. It's just a, it's just a pretty decent horror flick that doesn't break the mould, but you're watching a great performance. That's the best way I can sum it up. So if you've seen it, let me know. I doubt you have. I doubt anyone's going to go see this movie, but you should because it's good. And Russell Crowe's good, isn't it? So if you've seen it, let me know down below. If you're new here, do hit subscribe. Thank you so much. Take care.